All righty, it is time to go ahead and retopologize our little hippo character slash animal here. And if you don't, if you're not familiar with what retopology is, retopology basically means to take an existing model, such as our hippo here that we have sculpted in all the detail, and that all that sculpted detail is on a very simple base mesh. What retopology means is to take this existing model and basically recreate a mesh on top of it that has good, clean topology, that is animation friendly, that is poseable, that's easy to texture, and it's basically kind of an in-between mesh where it's a higher resolution mesh than our base mesh and that has good topology, but of course it's not as dense as our sculpt, of course. You know, if you were to actually apply this multi-resolution modifier, this model would be completely unworkable for most practical cases. So retopology means to basically recreate a mesh that is usable for many things. So what we're going to do is we're going to retopologize by basically sketching on and extruding on a new mesh over the surface of the existing one and all of the vertices will actually snap to the actual mesh. Now there's many different ways to do retopology. Um, I have a couple of different tutorials on Blender Cookie already. One of them was uh, retopologizing and baking normal maps of a creature head, and the other was retopologizing using the B Surfaces tool. Now, B Surfaces is an add on that was previously a premium add on that you had to pay for. It was, I believe, $25, and it was worth every penny. B Surfaces is, well, flat out awesome. It's really, really cool. And that's actually what we're going to be using today. However, you're in luck because it is no longer a premium add-on and is actually released as uh, GPL now. And you can find it one of two ways. One, if you're still using Blender 2.63 or 263A, uh, and I hope that it's compatible, uh, then you can simply go to bsurfaces.info. You can watch the intro video on it to really get an idea of what bsurfaces is. You can see the feature improvements and whatnot. You can download it and you can view the help menu. Now, bsurfaces is, does not work like any other tool really. So I definitely encourage you to check through this help document before following this tutorial even if you're not familiar with bsurfaces. Uh, we're not going to be using, uh, you know, we're actually only going to be using a small percentage of B services capability within this, namely those for retopology. And so I'm not going to take you through all of those features. I do plan to do a full B services tutorial with a complete breakdown in the near future. So if, if that is of interest to you, please do speak up, say so in the comments, submit a tutorial request. Uh, the more requests for it that I get, the more uh, incentive I have to do it. So I definitely do plan to do it though. Um, the other way to get B surfaces, if you don't want to download and install it, is you can simply use a latest development build, which is actually what I'm using. I am using, uh, you just go to builder.blender.org, download latest builds, and then you can choose the latest one for your system. And these are generally built, I believe, once a day to show the latest development release. Now, of course, you know, that being a development release, that comes with a normal disclaimer that be careful with it. If you want to use it for production work, definitely save a backup of your file. You know, use common sense because it's not necessarily going to be ready and it's not guaranteed to be bug free. In fact, it will probably will be buggy. Now, in my case, I'm using a development build from about a week ago, but the incentive to using a development build in this case is that B services is already included. You don't need to download and install it. So enough of that. Uh, I don't want to keep going off on tangents here, but let's just get started. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that B services is enabled. So we're just going to go to our add-ons. It's listed in the testing support level and we just type in B surf and that will pull it right up. So it's mesh B services, GPL edition, make sure you're using version 1.5. If this is a 0 0.9, you want to be sure that you actually remove that version first, or you may have some problems with conflicts. So be sure you're using version 1.5. It's enabled and we're just going to get started. In order to use B surfaces, the first thing that we have to have is a mesh with which to create our B surfaces mesh out of. So I'm just going to hit shift A, add in a plane. Now it doesn't need to be a plane, it can be anything because the next thing that I'm gonna do is hit tab to go into edit mode and I'm simply going to delete the entire mesh. So now what I have is literally an empty mesh object that has no vertices, but that I can now create my new mesh from. All right. B surfaces works primarily using the grease pencil to actually draw on your mesh and draw on how you want your mesh to be extruded. So we're first going to, in the properties panel, let's just add a new grease pencil. 
and we'll add a new grease pencil layer. And the main thing that we need to change here is change the draw settings from cursor or view, the defaults, to surface. This way, when we draw on here, it'll actually draw on the surface of any underlying mesh. And one of the things, since I'm on a Windows machine right now, uh, one of the tips you'll find on the B Surfaces site is that at the bottom, um, it's a good idea to deactivate smooth strokes in the preferences editing tab. And so we're going to go ahead and do that just for re more reliable results. Uh, or actually, you can already see that it is disabled. So if this is enabled, go ahead and disable it if you're on a Windows system. Or maybe, I think that was actually, uh, no, never mind, that's just in general. So if smooth stroke is enabled, go ahead and disable it while working with B surfaces. So the first thing that we want to do is I'm just going to, I want to add in this general portion of the mesh here. So what I'll do is just holding down my D key and left click and drag and I'm going to draw in. I'm going to follow the stroke right here. And then I'll go ahead and follow this one right here. So I'm following the forms of the body. And one thing to note when drawing with B surfaces is all of your, the direction of your strokes absolutely matters. And I'll show you more on that in just a moment. I'm just going to hide all my mesh tools. And with those two strokes, I'm simply going to click add surface. And you can see immediately what it's done. It's basically added a mesh between those two strokes where each of the vertices then follow the shape of my stroke and then it interpolates between the two. We then have several options here for cross and follow where cross is the number of um, perpendicular loops. So I can maybe turn this down, you know, six is probably a good amount. And then follow is the number of parallel loops to the strokes that it's going to add in between the two. And this one, you know, you'll be adjusting throughout but I want to keep my polys fairly even. So in this case, I'm going to keep that at three. Uh, we don't really need to worry about the cyclic cross or cyclic follow. Uh, what that does is you can see it actually makes a complete circular mesh in one way or the other. Uh, we do want to have the loops on strokes option that just makes sure that it stays nice and even. The automatic joining is for another thing and stretching is for others as well. We probably won't be using those much today. And you can see that it's added in this really nice even mesh. Okay, all fine and dandy. Well, now let's go ahead and select, say just alt right click to select this loop. And maybe we wanna just quickly extrude this back along here. Well, I'm just going to draw in a couple paths, say something like this and like this and like this, following the contours of my body or the hippo's body. And I'm going to click add surface. Sweet, it just works really well. Now, one thing that you'll notice here, and you know, maybe I don't need to have quite so many follow loops, that's probably a little better. One thing that you'll notice is that we have some parts where it's intersecting the mesh. Um, and maybe, you know, this is maybe not quite as even, so maybe I'll edge slide that over a little bit. I'll edge slide this over, but overall it looks pretty good. But we could improve this result. You know, we can see that it's it's intersecting here, it's intersecting here, and it's not really sitting on top of the surface. And that's because it adds in the strokes um, where your grease pencil strokes are with the at, with the strokes on on uh, or cur or loops on strokes option. Uh, and so you know, it doesn't actually B surfaces has no care about the actual surface of your mesh. It's only caring about the grease pencil strokes, which happen to be drawn on the surface. So we can actually improve our grease or our retopology result by going in and adding a modifier. We're going to choose a shrink wrap modifier, and then we're going to target it to our hippo. And what that'll do then is actually improve the result by then bringing up each one of the vertices to the surface. Now we also want to enable the keep above surface. And if you then just boost the, you know, you can see if you boost the offset value, exactly what it does. In this case, we're just going to keep that at zero. And that then works quite well. Now you can see that there's a few things here where maybe this is not sticking as close to the surface as maybe we would like, but that then, you know, is, is really quite close. If we enable this in edit mode, then you can see it's actually directly on the surface and we get an even better result. So the, we're gonna do that, just be aware that this is enabled. And so sometimes you're gonna get different results maybe than you immediately expect, but I think that'll work quite well. All right, so we're going to continue um, using our uh, B surfaces. And let's just quickly go in. And one of the things with retopology is that we want to have a very good clean mesh. And part of that means good topology. So things like loops around the eyes, 
going down, you know, around the major portions of the head, loops around the legs, all of these normal things with topology we need to keep into account. So, you know, loops around things like this. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, topology rules and things like that, I do really encourage you to check out my collection of tutorials on topology. Uh, I will link to it in the description, but if you just go to the top of Blender Cookie and collections, uh, then you'll see topology as an option. And got a lot of detail in there as far as some topology rules, guidelines, things like that on getting good clean topology. So if you haven't followed that already, I do encourage you to do that. Okay, so let's now, before we continue on this surface, I want to just add in some direct things around the eyes and such. So start getting some of those loops in. So I will just, there's a couple different ways we can do that. B surfaces supports both cross hatching and then just the loops extrusion. The cross hatching I've not found to be as uh, exact as I would like. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a couple of loops like this, just drawing out loops. And you'll notice that I'm um, making them quite evenly spaced because now when I add surface, you'll notice that it actually adds those on my original loop position to then give me a nice clean result. Now, obviously in this case, I need to dramatically reduce the cross and follow options and such, but I think that will be nice and good. You know, I want to have a nice amount of detail in here in the case that I wanted to animate it. Uh, I can also disable the follow option. And here's a case where you can see that the loops on stroke option, what it does is loops on disabling this, it will then just give me an average result where every single loop will be exactly evenly spaced. And so this is maybe actually ideal in this case because I really want a really nice evenly spaced mesh, not necessarily exactly where I draw it. So just be aware of that and what it does. Now I can go and select this loop, which means it'll be my starting point. And then I'm just going to draw out from this. And what when you don't have loops on stroke enabled, what the important thing is that you have, um, you know, it's basically the start and end point or start and end point of your strokes that then determine the width of this. Now, if I want to then merge this with here, now I hope that this works correctly, but I think it should, if I just draw right over this and then click add surfaces, uh, we can see the automatic joining did not work in this case. Uh, well, you know what, we're gonna do this. I know that you can do automatic joining, but I haven't worked with it quite enough to really um, be too familiar with it. You also notice we're getting a little bit of funky results in there. So let's just go out like this and like that again. I think the reason we are getting funky results there is I basically went back on a stroke. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. There we go. Okay, now on these I might smooth out some of these results just a little. There we are. Okay, now let's try one more thing. So I want to get these connected just fine. So what I can do, I believe, if I can select both these loops and now draw between these vertices like this and click add surface. Oh, no, I need at least two strokes. So I'll do both sides here like that click add surface, you can see then it joins them right together. And then I just need to adjust the cross amount. We'll go say something like uh, three will probably be fine. Now one general rule with topology is generally riggers and animators prefer to have the same number of vertices on the top as on the bottom. So something we might do is if we just go like this, basically connect each vertex to the next one, we can see how many we have. And in this case, this works just fine so long as I then put these two at the corner so that then they go like this. So that gives me the same amount. I just may need to, you know, kind of even things out just a little bit. So that's uh, just a little tip since uh, oftentimes the retopology process, one of the reasons that we do it is not just so that we can have a model that's easy to texture and such, it's also so that we can have a model that's easy to rig and animate by the rigger and or animator. Sometimes they're the same person. Uh, and so, you know, we want to be sure that we are taking into account those things that they need when we do this. Now, this is maybe a little high poly, you know, we really don't necessarily need this many loops, so I might go ahead and delete 
some of these edge loops just to smooth it out just a little bit. You know, um, a good practice generally is to go a little simpler than you think you needed initially, because as long as your topology is good, it's always easy to add more loops in than it is to remove loops in a lot of cases, at least when you're initially building the mesh. All right, now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and bring this section down like this just a little. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to grab this. I'm going to go down like this. We'll just say something like that. I'll add this surface. I'll take down the follow option. We'll just go to two. And we'll turn off loops on stroke. There we go. So now I can actually get two in there. I like that a little better. I might slide this along. And so I think you can see how, you know, B surfaces is really a really cool tool that particularly once you really get the hang of it, it's not only um, quite good, but it's also very fast. Now, you know, I'm going a good bit slower right now um, while I'm also getting familiar with or more familiar with B surfaces. You know, I don't use it every day, although I definitely, now that it's included by default uh, in Blender, I definitely plan to be using it a lot more. Um, but also, since I'm also instructing, then, you know, I need to keep things a little bit slower. Okay, I'm going to do one more thing now. I'm also going to add in a mirror modifier here, and I'm going to enable clipping. So this way I can then just grab this mesh, pull it right into the center, pull this one in. There we go. And what I'm going to do now is I've got, you know, the majority of this, I think you understand how the process is working. So from this point on, I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this portion of the model. Um, and then uh, I'll be back with you in just a little bit to show you the final result. So uh, this, I'm going to sign off and just time lapse this section so you can still see the process, but so that I'm not holding you here for, you know, hours. Right now we're already at 17 minutes, so I want to keep the pace moving. from my time lapse for just a moment to talk a little bit about um, which you may run into problems with on the shrink wrap modifier. So like I mentioned, that there's a lot of different ways to actually do the retopology process. But you may notice as I move these vertices here in the IA, you know, it's really just kind of snapping all over and really not giving me the precision that I want in this case. So one of the other things that you can do is if you go in here, for one, there's no reason you can't apply the mirror modifier or the, uh, the sub or shrink wrap modifier multiple times throughout the process. So if I just apply it, I can go in and add another one at any point that I want. But the other way that you can also do it, or in conjunction with it, is if you enable, go in here, enable face snapping, and choose snap on other objects, then what you can do is as you move, hold down control, and it'll actually snap directly to the surface underneath it much more accurately than shrink wrap. Because shrink wrap tries to snap to the nearest surface point, whereas the project on other objects actually projects onto the surface directly behind your view, no matter where it's at. And so even though it can be a little annoying at times, it works quite well for getting very precise in areas. You know, so if I want to get really precise right in here, 
then it just works perfectly. And so sometimes, you know, sometimes you want to use shrink wrap, maybe using shrink wrap for the first initial portion of it works quite well, but other times maybe you won't want to use shrink wrap. So for example here, if I wanted to do face snapping right here and I want to bring this down here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw out like this, draw in my path, draw my second path, something like that. I'm going to add surfaces. And then these are not snapped directly to the surface necessarily. So I can just select them, hit G, hold down control for a moment, and it will snap directly to the surface underneath those vertices. So that can work really well. And sometimes, um, personally, that's actually my preferred way to do it. Once I start getting down to the actual details and I want to be really accurate, then that's the way that I like to do it rather than using the shrink wrap. But like I said, I like to use both. So it's more just which portion of the process am I working on uh, that determines kind of which technique that I want to use. So that's it for that. Um, back to time-lapsing. I miss you. Where are you hiding? Miss you. Your soul's not lighting up now. I miss you and the hope once shining through you. Did someone hurt you? Did you give in to bribery? Did fear wrap around you? The power strong arm liberty.
think that will probably do it for the retopology. I uh, can see here's our original model, and if we now actually go in here and just turn off our modify or subs or blah, 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 the shrink wrap modifier in the edit view or in the object view, then we can just compare these side by side. And we can see that, you know, the, the forms are almost identical as far as the overall shapes. Um, there's a few things that, oh, actually, you know what? Let's, let's undo that real quick. Let's just apply our shrink wrap modifier now, and then we can move this over and then we can see, you know, so that we don't have those weird glitches in there. We've got a few lines along the center that need to be moved to the inside. So we just alt right click to select that inside loop and then just move it towards the center. Uh, may need to move it in both directions just to make it lock to the inner axis with the mirror modifier. But I think that will work just fine. Uh, you know, this, this mesh then is animation friendly. Uh, they got a couple of topology things here and there that maybe feel a little bit weird, but I think we'll be just fine. Uh, we could go ahead and bake normal maps to this. We could use this as a high frequency sculpt base if we wanted for uh, sculpting in really fine details and such. But either way, that will work really well. So that gives us our final retopologized model. Let's just take a look here. And I think that will do it. So that's it for retopology. Uh, the next step and the, the final thing that we'll do on this model is we're going to unwrap the UVs and then bake out the normal map so that we have a nice, posable, uh, high-detailed model. So I'll see you on the next part.